Hey, I'm Michael Lombardi of Better Noise Music. Welcome to Behind the Noise with DL from Bad Wolves. If my world stops spinning, My whole life, I played guitar from really early age, probably seven, eight years old. You know, I started taking lessons for personally the right reasons, but technically the wrong reasons. Well, what do you mean? Um, you know, I, I was I started getting into White Zombie. I started getting into like a little bit of the heavier stuff yeah. at a young age. I, I just wanted to be able to play it. How do you play these riffs? Like, yeah. how do you make that sound? A lot of stupid stuff, like uh, even palm muting on a guitar, I thought that that was a pedal. Like there was so much stuff that I was interested in that I wanted to learn. So that's kind of why I wanted to start playing guitar, just to feel it and pick it up for myself. And the first teacher I had, older dude, uh, kind of a blues oriented guitar player. He was really sick. I would go into those lessons and I would ask this guy like, Hey, how do you play? How do you play this Marilyn Manson riff, or how do you play this like metal song riff? And he's just like, you're just you're not there yet. Like, stick to the book. Like we were doing Mel Bay book one. Like we were just doing it doing it by the book. And maybe a year into that, it, it took a little while for him to finally like say this. But after the, after our lesson that day, he pulled my pops aside and he was like, this kid doesn't have it. <laughs> this kid doesn't have it. Forget the guitar lessons. Like he's not interested. Do something else. Whoa. Yeah. So well, wait, wait, not not has it because you didn't have it, but he thought you weren't interested, or both. Because I wasn't completing his assignments, yeah. his homework, sure, satisfactorily. Because I wasn't interested in the yeah, in digging that deep technicality wise. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to learn riffs, and I was interested in music. And I was. What age is this? I was young, man. I like like eight, nine, maybe wow. at that point. So You're that put was, in a box. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, but isn't it funny how at, you know, eight, nine years old, you remember that just right now, like those experiences that your experience, that could have turned you off forever. And then yes. you'd never be where you are now. This is true. So, so anyway, you go, you start, so, so that happens, but then you take your own route is what I'm I, guessing. I, I, I think ahead. that pushed me more. Yes. Yeah, just, just feeling that like, feeling like a failure that day, especially in my pop size, because uh, to be honest, my dad was like the reason why I started playing guitar in the first place because he had an old guitar and he wasn't really like a, a guitar player. He just had a guitar that he brought back from Poland. My parents are, are both immigrants and um, that got me interested. That, that made me want to take lessons and then the music and everything. So wow. I felt like a failure that day in front of my pops that like got me into this thing and like yeah. paid for the lessons. And yeah. So yeah. But it sounds like you came from a humble upbringing. So for him to get you lessons was uh he put some effort into yeah it. yeah for sure sacrifice he sacrificed time and money and yeah and yeah so to have a teacher be like this kid sucks like he's not finishing his homework it was, it was a bummer but yeah. it definitely drove me to want to be better and uh and explore the avenues that i wanted to explore more so tell me a little bit about you've been in the studio with bad wolves yep so, so tell me about that process. How long have you been in? How many songs have you delivered? How does that go? What's the pressure? How, are, how do you feel about the songs? Like, well, give it to us. So we started writing this album about a year ago. Everybody in the band is pretty much a, like a producer in their own right. Everybody has their own rig, has their own ideas. There's never like a set time of we're writing now, we're doing this now, we're like, Especially John. John's just a fucking beast when it comes to work ethic, just being on top of his game. That guy just like writes music in his sleep. Wow. So it's 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 inspiring, man. It's it's hard to keep up with some days because he's fast. Like he's 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 an orchestrator. Um, yeah, and you know it's crazy. You don't think of this, but John, your drummer, you don't think of the drummer like writing the music. And again, that's me being naive. And we talked about being open, but I was really shocked. We all had dinner one time and you know, it was so interesting to see John, like the way he talked and he articulated and the passion that he had for your music and your band and he writes and he's like the guy. You he's know? he's a, the most professional dude I've ever come across. Like if you didn't know that side of him and you just catch him partying or whatever, cause he can fucking out drink anybody that I know. <laughs> but um, yeah, but if you catch that business side of him, he's professional, he's charismatic. 
He cares more than anybody I've ever met. I mean, we gotta give Doc a shout out. That guy, he, well, first he was in The Retaliators, a horror movie that Better Noise produced, um, and he was awesome in it. I think I shot with Doc a lot, man. He's such a good dude, he's smart too. He, he's extremely intelligent. Like, Doc is hyper intelligent to the point where like, it almost makes me uncomfortable sometimes. Like, <laughs> dude is so fucking smart and like, knows so much about like anything, you, he could, he's the kind of guy that could like talk intelligently about a penny for like two mm. hours, like it's nuts. Like, it's funny, I thought it was just about film because when I called him and I said, hey, you know, do you want to play this role? Do you want to be in this movie? It's a horror film, so we started talking about the genre and his his knowledge runs deep. And I was like, all right. It, it's insane, yeah, like not to mention he's an incredibly talented guitar player, like dude rips. My former band, Acacia Strain, and his former band, God Forbid, we played shows together, and it's just, I have a history with, with Doc. And he's great dude, great musician, and uh, after Bad Wolves, he should just be a college professor and just stop fucking around. He's just like, teach. <laughs> that dude, people need to learn shit from him, all right? Wow. Yeah. And then let's, uh, we gotta talk about Kyle, right? So we got John, we got Doc, we got Kyle, and of course, we've got DL. Give me, give me a little behind the noise about Kyle. Kyle is the biggest sweetheart ever. You know what makes Kyle happy? A bag of fresh laundry and a fucking bang. He loves those energy bang drinks. <laughs> so if you catch him on a good day with, with his laundry done and a bang in his hand, he's just the sweetest dude ever. Uh, insane bass player, best bass player I've ever been in a band with. Dude knows his tone. He really loves music. Now that people heard him on Dear Monsters, because he never sang on Bad Wolves records before Dear Monsters, but he did some screaming on Dear Monsters. Now you guys know how burly of a fucking throat that dude has too. Wow. So yeah, all around uh, Kyle is one of my favorite dudes ever. He's, he's a fucking sweetheart. So yeah, we've been working on this material and I think we've just been piecemeal compiling music and I think now is like the time that we've finally have a collaboration and a collection of music that like feels good as a record. Yes. Yep, it feels good as a record. And we want to make it a, a strong point on this record to, um, because we we won't be happy any, any other way as long as we feel like we're meeting a, a standard of being adventurous. So let's go, let's talk about the who. When I first heard of The Who, you know, Alan Kovac, the founder, CEO of Better Noise Music, he said to me, you gotta hear that my new band, The Who, that we just signed. They're this obviously incredible Mongolian rock band. Uh, yeah, it's very <laughs> How do you even do that? I know. I That's know like the that. oldest amazing. form of singing, and it's been studied, and these guys are incredible. Straight pros, amazing. I've said it a million times, I'll say it again, but it's like more than music for sure. It's like, a, it's a vibe, it's, it's cultural, it's ancient. It's something you don't get every day and that's what makes them stick out amongst a sea of bands. They're able to still like transcend genres. They can make a rock song and it makes sense like, like we did together. They can do it acoustically and it just sounds more tribal and like, yeah. and ancient. So, so really there's just like, there's no limitations to what those guys can do. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, and you know what I think of too when I think of the Who, like truth. Like they live what they preach, you know? Yeah. Like their connection to nature and their message about nature and their warrior spirit. Also, in the song, you are a warrior. hard to hold up to guys that are actual warriors but um but yeah I, I did feel a, a sense of responsibility and I was really honored that I was able to, to do a song with them because I loved the song from the get-go you just hearing the instrumental even if you don't if you're not a fan of rock even if you're not a fan of metal like you just you fall into this groove it's almost like trance like and like I felt that just hearing the instrumental it became this like monster of a song and, and I'm, I'm so proud of it man like those guys are, are the sickest and I'm, I'm truly, truly fucking honored to, to have been able to work on that with them. You know, I think it's hard to be still when you're listening to something powerful or you want to move. Yes. But what I think you did so beautifully is all the power comes to you. You are an action hero. 
the basis of the song, the feel of the song, the, the pulse of the song, and then the story around it, it makes you feel empowered. And even the setting of the studio that day, and um, yeah. there was just a vibe, you know? Yeah. And it was hard to even let it go. And you like, literally, you were like flexing out the whole time, remember? You got like a workout. Yeah, for too. sure. It was, hard, it was it, we were talking about it, it was like a, it was like a Bruce Lee workout that day. Yes. No weights, just really the squeezing. Whole time. Yeah. Dude, that fucking video, man. Just the lighting and the close-ups, and you brought so much to it. When I gave it to The Who, they were really psyched, man. And, and I'll tell you, there's a big responsibility in not only bringing the vocal when you get the feature, performing in the video, and then us creating the video and giving it to them, because we honor the song right. and the band. You're like, we're, we're fans of the we're, band. We're yeah. fanboying out, and yeah. we're like, okay, here you go. And they were so happy with it. And you know what? As of like last week, man, the, the video has over a million views. I cannot say enough how honored I feel to have been able to work with them. I'll, I'll be proud of that song forever. Even beyond music and stuff, I'll, I'll be watching that video when I'm 80 years old with my oatmeal. Funny story about The Who, actually. I, I didn't really listen to them before. My dad listened to them before I did. And um, the second I told him that I was doing a feature with The Who, he like dropped everything. He like looked at me, he's like, wait a minute, The Who? And right away he pulls his laptop out and he had just like a plethora of uh, like stuff saved from The Who. And so my father it was a, before any, before me being in the band, any of this, he was an avid fan of The Who and he was so stoked that I got to be on a song with them and like it's his favorite thing in the world now, so. Dude, that is, I mean, that's, we talked about obviously your dad's influence on your musical career yep. and how he sacrificed. And uh, that's how you got into music, right? And here now you are. Um, Check it out, Dad. I'm singing with your favorite band. <laughs> you told me that on set. And I'm like, this is something people need to know because it touched me in the moment. And, uh, you know, our relationship with our parents is a, is a tricker, tricky one. Uh, especially if you want to take the route of art and maybe they're not into it. We always want to make our parents proud and we want to do Absolutely. well. So that's a big moment um, for you. DL from Bad Wolves here. Better noise behind the noise. Come check it out. Thank you so much for watching. Listen, everybody, we want to hear from you. We want to know what bands you want to see next because we will go deep. We will go behind the scenes. We will go behind the noise. Yeah, I'm Michael Lombardi with Better Noise Music, and we are listening. Are you?